In the morning, Kenjo woke up before Filet. He looked over at his wife and smiled. Kenjo carefully leaned over to kiss her as to not wake her. His hand traced down her body as he got out of bed. He bent down to kiss her belly that held their baby safe and warm. He never knew he could fall so hard for a little person that he never met. Kenjo shuffled to the kitchen for coffee for himself and tea for Filet. She's never been big on coffee and some breakfast. As he did this, he heard Filet as she got up and went to the bathroom. Are you sure you want to come, honey? It'll be fine. I promise. You don't feel good. Why don't you stay here and rest and go to the market later? Kenjo yelled Filet from the kitchen. Filet finished in the bathroom, washed her hands, walked to the love seat to lay down. Kenjo walked over to her and put a fresh hot cup of tea and some crackers on the coffee table beside her. Kenjo leaned down to kiss her and said, I mean, really, it can't be good all the hiking and walking. Stay here. Rest. Spend some time in the pool. Uh, give me a little time with the tea and crackers. I'll be okay in a bit. Filet replied as she sat up to reach for her tea. Kenjo nodded and sat beside her with his coffee and cuddled her a while before he went to prep their knapsack with snacks, water, and other supplies for their trek to the hidden temple. As they walked through the last gate that led to the temple, they both gasped and gazed in awe at the ancient structure. They started to walk to the temple. While doing so, a wave of nausea overcame Filet as she grabbed onto Kenjo's shoulder to stop him from walking and to keep steady. Hold on just a sec. Can we wait here a minute? Filet asked, placing her hand on her belly, inhaling slowly, deeply. Oh, God, of course. I forgot, sweetheart. Please, take your time. Kenjo said as he put his backpack down and wrapped Filet in his arms, kissing the top of her head. They walked carefully hand in hand up the temple stairs to the very top level. There wasn't much inside, but they found a little pile of rubble and dug through it for a bit. Inside, there was a lump of clay with something else inside. Kenjo put it in their knapsack for later examination. They went to the next level down and found a few more piles to dig through before proceeding to what they thought was the ground floor. Let me check this place out real quick. I don't want you or our baby to get hurt in any way. We're here a sec, Kenjo said. Flay nodded. She took a seat on the stairs and rested for a bit and Kenjo headed up the outside stairs and down the other set of stairs that led to the ground floor. He turns left. Without hesitation, he jumps into the pool that was laid out in a maze-like path. He swam through the twists and turns until it stopped at an archway on the far right-hand side. Through the arch, Kenjo saw the most elaborate gate he's ever seen. He looked around to see how he might open it. He texted Filet to check on her and to tell her that it was safe to come when she was ready. Really? I think you're right, Filet said. I'm not feeling good. I think I'll go back to the villa and rest. I'll see you later. Good luck down there. Be careful. I love you, she added. I think that's a good idea, love. Careful getting back. I love you. I'll be back tonight, Kenjo replied. Kenjo saw an obelisk in the little room. Oh, I've read about these mechanisms. Huh. Maybe it'll help me open this gate, Kenjo said to himself as he examined it. Alas, it did not yield any information about unlocking the gate. He decided to come back out into the main room to check out the skeletons. Maybe they'll have more information. While he was out in the main room, he saw painted stone tablets on the walls with glyphs. Some of them corresponded to those on the first mechanism. He studied them all to gain as much historical insight as possible before he tried the skeleton triggers. After he looked at all the tablets, he went back to the skeletons and pulled the left warrior's weapon. Success! The gate's defenses are down and it has opened. Now, Kenjo ventures further to see what he can find. Look, another tablet, he said as he took out his little notepad. He goes down the stairs to find some different tablets he's never seen. 
a rubble pile, and another skeleton mechanism. He's stoked, and he gets to work studying the things right away. But wait, where did this skeleton come from? <laughs> well, that's creepy. He's never seen a skeleton walking around like that. Maybe if Kenjo introduces himself like a Salvadoradian, he can learn things about the temple. Hi there. My name is Kenjo Yamaguchi. I'm exploring your temple. I hope you don't mind my trespassing, Kenjo said. Not at all. I'm Ruby Skeleton, the guardian of this temple. I've been watching you. I appreciate the care you are taking with the artifacts you are looking at. Please let me know what you find. Oh, be careful. This is the last temple of my people, the Omaskan. May Kettle Keatley guide you, Ruby said. Kettle Keatley? He asked Kenjo. Ruby responded, Yes, they are one of our four deities, and the god of crop preservation and longevity. We used to keep a statue of them in our stone food boxes to keep the food cool and make it last longer. What about the other three deities? Kenjo asked. Full of questions, aren't we, today, Kenjo? said Ruby. Kenjo shrugged bashfully. Pay it no mind, my friend, I will tell you of our chiefs of the three seasons. The greatest fighter, Hilotli, is the chief of the first season. Legend tells of him fighting an assault of three dire chinchillas, said Ruby. That doesn't sound so bad. It actually sounds rather cute. A chinchilla assault? Kenjo said with a giggle. Not just any chinchillas, dire chinchillas, three of them at once. Ruby replied in an annoyed tone. The insolence. Ruby scoffed. Itotia, the chief of the second season, blessed us with Rumbasim. It was the hottest dance in all of Salvadorada amongst the Omascan people. He continued. The Rumbasim? My wife loves that dance. It's her favorite. Kenja exclaimed. Oh, so it has transcended the time of the Omascan and remained within the people? Ruby asked. Well, yes. We see many dancing the Rumbasim at the marketplace square, but we're not from Salvadorada. The dance has become international over the millennia, replied Kenjo. Ruby clapped and tried to smile until he realized he didn't have muscles or skin to smile with. That's wonderful to hear. Please keep it alive. Now, the third season chief is Metzli. While not the greatest of our chiefs, he did claim the invention of the banana and demanded to be immortalized. Now that's hilarious, laughed Kenjo. Is it? Is it really? Ruby looked Kenjo in the eyes and contorted his body to startle him. How funny is it now? Make no bones about it. All chiefs are to be revered and never mocked. Are we clear? Ribby demanded. Kenjo coughed to stop himself from laughing. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. Thank you for telling me about the chiefs of the three seasons. <laughs> Best to be off with you. Finish your exploration, then be gone from here. After today, I never want to see you here again. You were on thin ice, Kenjo. Watch your step. Ruby commanded. I am watching you. Ye ye yes, sir. Kenjo replied nervously. He straightened up and went to look at the skeleton mechanism again. Just his luck. He found nothing to learn from it. He went back to looking at the tablets to see what he could learn. Gaining no insight whatsoever, even after he went back through the rest of the temple to look at all of the glyphs again, he decided to try his luck with the center warrior. Nope. Wrong. He got nothing but a mouth of bone dust. Bleh. Next, he tried the right warrior. Success! Passing into the next room, he immediately saw an electrifying situation. The gate had electricity passed between the sides. Before he made it that far, he stopped to dig in a dirt pile and pick up some bone dust for funsies. After he did that, he walked over to examine not one, but two totems. He made sure to take a few pictures first, though. He hopes that these two triggers will be more helpful than the last room. The one in the alcove did not look promising. However, the one next to the gate? Ooh, he remembered the tablets and decided to try the blame game. He blamed the totem for the dangers in the temple. 
It didn't make much sense to him, but he tried it anyway. Well, it worked. He hoped this would be the last room. He's tired and wants to get back to his pregnant wife. He misses her and he wants to hold her and tell her all of his adventures. He walks in and sees a rock with a fossil in it and sees some tablets and yet another trigger mechanism. While he's excited, he's kind of over it. He misses Filet. He'd call, but his cell didn't have a signal. Nonetheless, he carried on investigating in hopes that the end was in sight, just past the next gate. The first trigger he checked out, he was not quite sure if it was going to do any good. So he moved on. Around the corner into the next room was another obelisk with glyphs and holes like the one upstairs. And next to it was another, but without holes. This one had a lever. He investigated both. And it seems if he reached into the hole below the sun on the obelisk, something might just happen. Well done, Kenjo! And on his first try, too. He managed to pull the right trigger to open the gate. He walked through the gate and down the stairs to whatever was awaiting him below. In the first room on the left, there was a little pile of dirt. He established a dig site. Then he walked into the largest room. Before him were four skeletons. Each skeleton was facing one of the four corners of the room. To the left, right, and center were glyphs on the walls and chests. The center chest was glowing brighter than the others. It was a warm, golden light. It was overwhelming. So much stuff. He was so excited he could hardly contain himself. He wished Filet was here to share this, but he swore he'd take so many photos for her. The best thing to do, he thought, was to start from the left, go to the right, and then finish up in the center. In the chest on the left, he found a gold calendar plate. Hmm. And on the right, he found a Watcher relic base. Ooh, shiny. And in the center laid the Covenant of the Watchers, the reason the Guardians are here, the treasure of Omiskan. opens the chest and another relic base was inside and also he found what seemed to be a mask and a vase unauthenticated of course he'll do that later what an adventure he is beat he takes one last look around as he makes his way back out of the temple and back to his beloved wife he can't wait to tell her about it They woke up late the next day and had to rush to get everything packed so they can get checked out before they get charged for another day. Oh. Oh. <laughs> On the way to the village, to grab the taxi, he thanked Flay for agreeing to go to Selva Dorada so they could explore together. He also thanked her for loving him, marrying him, and being the mother of their child. He was beyond grateful. She just blushed with a tear slowly making its way down her face and hugged him tightly. They walked hand in hand, each dragging a suitcase behind them. On the way to the airport in the taxi, they just looked at each other and smiled. They both agreed that this was the best honeymoon ever. Come back next time when Filet and Kenjo begin their lives as a married couple with a surprise honeymoon baby on the way. Will it be human or will it be a fish? Thanks so much for watching everyone. May you be well, happy, and peaceful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.